chapter number 7. Luke's Gospel, please, chapter number 7. You come to Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. Come with me, please, down to verse number 30. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 7. And we're coming to verse 30 this evening. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And what are they like? They are like unto the children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came, neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And ye say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibbler, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children, of all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. And stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is, that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Verse number 44, And he the Lord Jesus turned to the woman and said unto, unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou givest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou givest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. One of the great blessings through life is to have friends, good friends. But even the very best of friends, they, they come and they go. And even our most sincere friends, they fail. But the greatest friend you'll ever have in life is the greatest friend you'll ever have in death. That friend tonight is the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, one thing I want you to understand tonight is this tonight, that the Lord Jesus Christ is not a religion. The Lord Jesus is a reality. One evening as I was sitting with a friend in the foyer of the Deus Hotel in London, one of the men in our group came over and spoke to me and the other friend that I, who was with me there, and he said, he says, I envy you two boys. Matt, my friend, says, what do you mean you're envious? What have we got that you envy? Oh, he says, there's something you two boys have got, he says. And he says, I envy you what you have. And I said to this friend, I says, well, Terry, what, what are you trying to say? What do you mean, you envy? What do you think we've got? He says, it's this religion business that you two boys have. He says, there's something about you. And I says, listen, Terry, it's not religion I've got because I don't like religion. It's not religion that I have because I detest religion. I know what you're looking at, and I says, it's not religion I have at all, it's the Lord Jesus. 
and the Lord Jesus is what I have, and the Lord Jesus is what Matt has. And you knew Matt longer than I knew him. And I can assure you now, it, it wasn't religion did for Matt Seifert. The Lord Jesus did for Matt Seifert what he did for me. And I went on to explain. I says, listen, Terry, what I have is not a religion at all. What we have is a reality. And what we have you can have tonight. You know, my dear unsaved friend tonight, religion done nothing for me. In fact, religion confused me. Religion used to bore me to tears. But the Lord Jesus Christ, it was him and him alone that changed my life. It was the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus alone that gave me life. It was the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus alone tonight that really satisfies me. The Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus alone is the one that has forgiven my sin. And it's the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus alone that taking me to heaven. On the 26th of August, 1985, a bank holiday Monday night, I can say, I found a friend. Oh, such a friend. He loved me ere I knew. And there's one thing tonight that the Lord Jesus does that religion doesn't do. And that is give eternal life. You see, religion, it always takes from people. The Lord Jesus, he doesn't take from people. He gives to people. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. If you look at religion very closely, what you'll find about religion, it always has the hand out. But the Lord Jesus tonight, he doesn't come to ask you to give him anything. All he wants from you tonight is your heart. And he wants to give you tonight eternal life. Tonight, throughout the four Gospels, you'll find people who found a friend in Jesus. You know, throughout the four Gospels tonight, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll find many people who found a friend in Jesus. Here, even in this very passage this evening, he was a friend to the worldly women because here in Luke chapter 7 tonight, here he comes into a Pharisee's house and we see this woman, and she's a sincere woman. Mind you, there's a lot of sincere people about and this woman was a sincere woman. She was sincere in her, her awareness. You see, this woman was aware tonight of who the Lord Jesus really was. She knew that this was no ordinary person. She knew that this one was the very person that she needed. You know, friend, tonight, he's the one that you need. He's the one tonight that you're after. You mightn't realize it or recognize it tonight. And here's a person this evening, this worldly woman, this sincere woman. She was well known in the city, perhaps for the wrong reasons. Here's a woman tonight, and she was used and abused. And here's a woman who had a heavy heart. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman whose sin gets to their conscience. And they believe she was troubled. And I believe she felt guilty conscience. And here's a woman that realized, she realized where she stood. And she knew who she was. And she knew what she was. But she knew who he was. He's the one. He's the one that I need. Tell me this tonight. Do you know who you are tonight? Do you know what you are? The Bible says you're a sinner. You see, any person that comes to Christ must realize and be aware that they're a lost sinner. You see, this is where sin places you and I tonight. If you have never trusted the Lord Jesus, sin has placed you away from God. 
But here's something else she was sincere about. She wasn't only sincere about her, about her awareness. I love this wee bit. She was sincere about her approach. You know this woman, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 7, when she realized where the Lord Jesus was, I love the way she came. She came humbly. She came to him and fell at his, at his feet. You see, here this sinful woman, sincere in her awareness, was very sincere in her approach. And here she was here as a sobbing sinner, perhaps could no longer live with herself. And I want you to notice not only was she sincere in her awareness and her approach, notice she was very sincere in her actions because her very actions tell us of what you want. No friend tonight hears this woman and she was broken. She didn't come teehaying and laughing. No, she come and she wiped her, his feet with her tears. You know, the Lord Jesus knew this woman's heart. I want you to notice what the old religious Pharisee said. If this man was really a prophet, he wouldn't. He wouldn't even think about her. He wouldn't give her a second thought because of what she is and who she is. But the Lord Jesus is not like that tonight because the Lord Jesus loves the sinner. And the Lord Jesus in verse number 48 turned round and said, and said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And he says to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. If I was able to bring this woman to the pulpit tonight, and if I was able to say, listen, that day in the Pharisee's house, what word of testimony would you give? I think she would have to say, I found a friend in Jesus. You remember the worldly woman in John chapter 4? And she was the searching woman. She was the one that came to the well searching. But you know, friend, but she was searching for something that doesn't satisfy. And she goes out to Jacob's well with no intention of meeting the Lord Jesus. No intention in getting sealed. You know, it reminds me, she reminds me so much of my own, my own life, you know. I remember going invited to a gospel meeting just like this, and I had no intention of listening to anything. I had no intention of getting saved. I had no intention of getting becoming a Christian. And I remember going through the church hall door that night, and I remember saying, get this over and done with, and get me out of here quickly. You see, I didn't even want to be there. I went that night to please the boss. But that night when I went to that meeting, suddenly I heard something that hit my heart. Suddenly I saw something that hit my heart. And what that was, was the Lord Jesus. All of a sudden I began to realize I'm having an encounter with someone I never had an encounter with before. And that was the Lord Jesus. And this woman, searching woman in John chapter 4, Realize you had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. You know, my dear unsafe friend, tonight, the greatest encounter you'll ever have is a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, friend, I noticed she encountered him, but I noticed she examined him. And you know, when the Lord Jesus asked for him to give me the drink, she said, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no de dealings with the Samaritans? You know, she examined him. Who is this? But you know what she discovered in the Lord Jesus? His love knows no boundaries. Even though the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans, the Lord Jesus, oh, he was different. He came to speak to me. He came to me to where I was. You see, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus doesn't know any boundaries in his love. You see, the Lord Jesus tonight died for all mankind. And he died for you and he died for me. And you remember that day at Jacob's well, whenever they sat together, and you know, friends, she examined him. This was a woman that was drinking from the well that didn't satisfy. And you know, friend, there's many like her tonight, drinking from the well that doesn't satisfy. But you know, friend, she came and she said, give me this water that I thirst not. And the Lord Jesus did something to that woman. Because you see, he gave her living water. 
See, the Lord Jesus gives them. And if you were to speak to that woman this evening, of the, of, of the woman by the well, do you know what she would say? I'll tell you at the well, I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. You think tonight of the lonely leper in, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. A lonely leper, a, a, man that you, a man that nobody would have touched with a barge pole. And here was a leper this evening. Cast out of the city, left to die like a dog. Nobody wanted him. Nobody would touch him. Nobody would go near him. But I'll tell you, the Lord Jesus didn't do that. You remember when he heard the Lord Jesus come and he went to the Lord Jesus and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou cleanse me. And you know, friend, I love that story to me. Here was a leper, unclean, undone, a man that nobody would go near, a man that nobody would touch, a man that nobody would even look at. Ah, but this is the very man that the Lord Jesus came to. You see, the Lord Jesus is the friend of sinners. And I love the story where it says, where the Lord Jesus done something that man wouldn't do. It says the Lord Jesus touched him. And it says, and immediately, he was made whole. You know something tonight, dear unsafe friend? The Lord Jesus wants to do that with you tonight. He wants to make you whole. He wants you to make you clean. He wants to take that leprosy of sin out of your heart and out of your life because the Lord Jesus touches the untouchable. He cures the uncurable. This old leper could say, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There is no other friend as kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Ah, oh, friend tonight. Friend tonight, this lonely leper could have said, I found a friend in Jesus. The worldly women could say, I found a friend in Jesus. What about the taunting thief on Calvary that day? Luke 23, verse uh, Luke 23 is the, t the day of the crucifixion. And you remember on that day, the soldiers scoffed him. The Jews jeered him. The, the mob mocked him. Even the very thieves taunted him. The very thieves taunted him. Both of them at one time cried out to the Lord Jesus, If thou be the Son of God, save thyself and us. Oh, they were, he was a taunting thief. And then there came a moment, and I think maybe he got the pain in the chest, the breathing was getting, he, he knew he was dying, and he knew death wasn't far away. Something opened his heart, I believe it was the Lord himself, something opened his heart, and he discovered, hold on a minute, this man on the middle cross didn't come to be saved. He came to save me. And he cried out to the one in the center across the Lord Jesus, and he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord Jesus gave him a promise. He says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Do you see the taunting thief tonight? The taunting thief could say, I found a friend in Jesus. What about you tonight? What about you? I want you to take this moment. Come with me to Calvary's cross. And I want you to see the Lord Jesus with nails in his hands and in his feet. I want you to see him tonight as he's crowned with thorns. I want you to see him tonight as his visage marred more than any other man. And I want you to see him tonight hanging between two thieves. Hanging there tonight your friend. You see, friend, tonight, there is no friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. When you see him tonight bearing shame and scoffing rude, in your place condemned he stood. Friend, tell me what other friend would go to that length for you today to go to Calvary's cross, to go there to suffer and to bleed and to die in your guilty room instead. Tell me, there wouldn't be any. But 
tonight he went there for you and for me because he loves you he loves me you know friend tonight he did something that nobody else would ever do and he can do for you what nothing else can do. Because the Lord Jesus tonight not only can forgive your sin, he's the one tonight that saves. Saves from sin. Tonight he's the one that wants to take you to heaven. He's the one that doesn't want you to perish tonight. He done all in his power when he was hanging on Calvary's cross. Tonight he's not on the cross. All his love for you can be seen in his precious blood. Tonight, tonight perhaps is the night where you will discover that the Lord Jesus can be your friend what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to him in prayer. May you go home tonight, finding in the Lord Jesus the greatest friend you'll ever have when you come to trust him be your Lord and to be your Savior. That's right. Lord, tonight in these closing moments, we thank thee, Lord, tonight that the Lord Jesus is the friend of sinners. We thank thee, Lord, that the Lord Jesus receiveth sinners. I thank thee, Lord, tonight that the Lord Jesus came to save sinners. And for any in our meeting this evening that's not saved, we pray earnestly, Lord, that thou would open their eyes, that they may see tonight that the one who hung and bled and died on Calvary's cross died for them and to save. So, Lord, in the closing moments of this meeting, we pray, Lord, tonight that thou would draw very close. And as we leave tonight, may we leave with that sense of thy presence. And, Lord, tonight, may thy speaking voice continue to be heard. We thank you, Lord, tonight for your love, for thy mercy, for thy grace. And Lord, as we separate now one from another, take us to our homes in safety, we pray. And if there's anybody here tonight, Lord, that thou hast been speaking to, we pray, Lord, you'll give them the grace to come. Come and put their trust in thee, whom to know is to know life eternal. It's through his precious name we pray.